I think Pearl is a story about a young woman who has dreams and aspirations to have a life more exciting than the one she was born into. Uh, it came together in a strange way. We were heading down to New Zealand to make X, and it was in the middle of the, the peak of COVID. And New Zealand was a safe place to make a film. And we had this infrastructure set up with a crew and a cast, and um, we were building all these locations for X, and we were spending all this effort to make a movie in the only place on earth at the time you could make a movie. And it made sense to me that like well, we should try to make two movies because while we're there, um, we should make the best use of everything that we have. And it initially started as like, well, what other movie could we make with all of the stuff that we had there? But a sequel didn't make sense because X was a movie about people that went to a farm and sort of terror ensues and just more people going to a farm wasn't that interesting. But one of the characters in X, Pearl, um, who Mia was playing, we had been talking about her backstory a lot because you don't get a lot of that in the film. And that became interesting. And so it was like, well, if we went backwards and we did her like sort of origin story, for lack of a better term, there was an interesting story there to tell. And it used all of the same you know, locations and everything that we were working on. So it made sense production-wise. And that's where it started. And then we went, we had to do two weeks of quarantine to get into New Zealand. And in that time, me and I collaborated on a script that we thought, best case scenario, we make a movie. Worst case scenario, um, it becomes a really fleshed out backstory for a character and X becomes a better movie for it. And you know, credit to A24, they loved the script and we made two movies back to back. Pearl is a, a young woman who's quite naive, and she's uh, you know she's got a lot of ambitions. And we follow her through the, this film, and we see her trying to, to make the best of a really difficult situation. Um, so I play uh, the the local projectionist at the cinema, um, who sort of plays a role in Pearl's life of just fanning the spark of her ambition um, and giving her a little uh, casual and easy encouragement that kind of uh, sets her on her journey to, uh, to pursue her ambitions. You know, it's 1918 for a couple of reasons. One, when we just sort of like reverse engineered the story and we subtracted years from old Pearl's life from X, it, it landed right around 1918, and then of course 1918 was very topical because of what we were all going through, and it was a story about isolation and whatnot. So it, it became an, another interesting layer to set it down due to the Spanish flu and the end of World War One. And um, you know, when we were writing it, we were all going through this sort of bizarreness that was the beginning of the pandemic, and so I think it added a, a, a layer to the movie that was not just topical, but kind of took something that otherwise would be a retro movie and sort of modernized it in a way. And um, I think it, it helps an audience have a, a way in with Pearl and her isolation and to sort of um, empathize with her a little bit more. Well, this was my first time uh, writing or co-writing a script. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I found the, the process at, at the beginning qu quite daunting. And I, I would just put a timer on my phone, maybe 30, 45 minutes at a time. And I would just uh, kind of write a kind of stream of consciousness and just see what comes out and, and uh, just kind of put a, a lot of through a lot of things at the wall and, and something stuck and you know we Ty would then implement that into the script and that's sort of how we went about um, forming the entire script. Well you know when we made X, X was a movie that was very informed and affected by sort of 1970s Autorish, independent um, exploitation cinema, a certain era in film. Um, and Pearl just had nothing to do with that. Pearl was about a young woman who had the hopes and dreams and ambitions and was sort of enthralled by the glamour that, like, you know, uh, the, a life in the movies or on stage would offer. And so it just felt, it, it seemed interesting to take a, a, a golden age of Hollywood or almost like a Disney type aesthetic, a, a youthful, almost naive aesthetic, and put a grounded, dark psychological story within that, because I had never seen that before. And it felt fresh. It felt like a, a way to tell the story in an interesting way. And then once you start doing that, I mean, you really kind of have to commit to it or else it starts to feel like a spoof. And we never wanted that. So we really wanted it to feel like, okay, we're going to put you in a time and place, and it's a fantastical time and place, but we're going to fully commit. And so everything from the design to the wardrobe choices, um, to even to the hair and makeup, it's all just sort of like within that pastiche and I think that creates a really um, just interesting contrast to what the story is. It's a challenge in a, in a couple of ways because we don't see most of that. I, the, the film has this technicolor uh, uh, sort of backdrop sky uh, feel to it. Um, and a lot of that does not appear on set. Um, so to a certain extent, 
uh, it's uh, it's about trusting Ty that uh, that he's going to do all that work after the fact. Um, and as actors, you're just playing the scene as as you play the scene. I think it probably came into play in a couple of times, uh, in a couple of moments having to do with performance. Um, a, a moment where uh, Pearl shows up and uh, I sort of sweep her into my arms and pull her into a door. We, uh, Ty described the shot and sort of what movie that was supposed to feel like. I think that might have been sort of a singing in the rain or I don't know, so, some, uh, some reference like that uh, to get the rhythm of it. Um, but for the most part, it, we don't get to see it until we see the movie in the theaters. You know, certainly, I think when we finished X, we really needed to, like, uh, detox from the 1970s, and I feel like we probably watched Wizard of Oz just as a palate cleanser. Um, and then there were some obvious nods to it here and there. Um, I know, like, whatever happened to Baby Jane, we talked about a little bit. Um, but everything else, I mean, from for Elliot Rocker, the DP, and myself, and Tom Hammond, the production designer, we probably looked at some stuff that was, like... Um, you know, anything from those films to Douglas Sirk films to The Red Shoes to things like that, just to, for the palette of it all. Um, but not so much for the movies as much as just sort of like palette, because it's an interesting thing that everybody kind of knows what that look is, but like when you actually start to go create it, it is strange. And it is strange to go like, could we really make the dress this red? And then if the dress is that red, we really need to go way further with the wallpaper and things like that. And that became a, um, like a balancing act. And so um, there was a lot of like, yes, there were mood boards, but they were mostly for things for like color palettes and things like that. I feel very grateful that people have really reacted like amazing to it so far. And um, I, mean, I think a big credit of that is to, is to Mia's performance. Um, I mean, she's in every frame of the movie. And if it, you know, the movie only works if she works. And I think it's, um, it's such a commitment to it and it's such a commitment to the... Um, to the material that I think that's where the emotional, I think there's a relatability to it, even though the movie is kind of larger than life in its style. Um, at its core, it's about a person, it's about their psychological and emotional uh, struggles and desires, and I think that's relatable universally to everybody. And so even though it's a pretty wacky movie and some really demented things happen, um, you know, it's ultimately about you know, wishing you had a different life, and I think everybody can relate to that. I hope that they come away from watching the movie uh, understanding Pearl uh, and empathizing with her. And, you know, it's been dubbed uh, a, a horror movie, but I think it's uh, far more uh, than that. And, and really, like, the horror lies in, 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 in her dreams dying and, and, and her having to come to, 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 to terms with that. And, and so I hope that they, uh, you know, ultimately just... Uh, are moved in, in some way. I think the fun thing about uh, combining watching Pearl with watching X is that they're very different genres and X is a real slasher, like a fun and scary and just uh, like big movie and Pearl feels very intimate and m I would say much more like a tragedy, a really moving tragedy. It has all of the entertaining elements of a great horror psychological thriller, but um, but I think the core of it is really the the character of Pearl and and finding as I was watching it, finding myself really rooting for her all the way through, uh, despite uh, the dark turns that she takes. <laughs>